Hello, I'm Gavin Clark with the National Museum of Computing at Fletchley Park and I'm here with James Gosling and we're talking about the 25th anniversary of Java. Uh, James is of course the uh, computer scientist and was the founder and lead uh, designer of Java. It's been adopted by 10 million developers. It's been adopted by, we think, at least 90% of the Fortune 500. It runs on billions of devices, that's mobile phones, Blu-ray, DVD players, smart cars, contactless cars, uh, at least 42 million Oyster cars, which is the uh, contactless smart car system for the London Underground, um, airline reservations, supercomputers, every, I think there's, there's very few things that Java doesn't run on. Hi James, how are you doing? How, how's it going for you? Well, pretty good, other than the whole locked at home for COVID thing. I know. Uh, are you okay keeping well over there? Um, yeah, I mean, fortunately, I'm in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, which um, has the peculiar advantage in these times of mostly being, being filled with people who are good at doing the math. And <laughs> 25 years ago, 1995, take us back to those days. Um, what was happening? How come? Who were you? Who were you back then? How did you come to work on Java and how did it happen at Sun in a, in a kind of a, in a brief way? So 25 years ago, I was an engineer at Sun Microsystems. Um, we had started a project in um, early 91 that was all about trying to understand where computing was going sort of outside of the normal data center. And we were looking at all kinds of stuff in what's now called the Internet of Things, mm. embedded devices, you know, everything from uh, TVs to locomotives. Um, and, you know, we as a, as a group were, you know, mostly, you know, there's like half a dozen of us. And my part of that project was to go solve some of the software development methodology program problems we were running into. Um, and we built some prototypes and, um, and that was all a really interesting learning experience. Um, and my part of that project, which was this programming environment, was really the only part that survived. You know, so it was really designed for the internet of things. Mm. Um, and then, you know, as, as time moved on, um, people started using it in data centers. Mm. Um, and then it got adopted by banks and credit card companies and phone companies and everybody. It started quite small though. I mean, I remember that time, uh, it was a, it was a browser. I mean, you talk about the TV, the IOT, but the debut was very much in, in the browser, which was, and we were coming in at the end of the browser wars then, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, it, it started out, in, you know, running in a browser, um, and and actually we built the browser using Java, mm. but the whole bra browser world has just a bucket of huge problems, especially back then. Um, web browsers in in ninety five were nothing like the web browsers today. I mean, what was the computing world back in ninety? It was so different, wasn't it? Could you? It was so siloed, wasn't it? It was, it was, it was siloed. It was really primitive. Um, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the average de desktop computer had about as much compute as, as, you know, my watch. Um, and it, 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 um, it, you know, in, in 95 people were, you know, the, the, the sort of, notion of computer networking was just starting to break out of the the you know universities and some and some corporations um and become like a, a real sort of social phenomenon um the whole the, this whole thing that, that people call the web um was really just a stylized way of using the internet. And the internet had been around for quite a while, mm. but not many people knew about it outside of the computer industry. And, and when it came to Java, we'll see Sun was Sun, who we should probably explain, Sun Microsystems, which doesn't exist anymore, was a, a systems company, it was server and workstations primarily. How did, what did Sun 
think of all the people, the companies, was it working on this idea? Well, you know, companies always place, <clears throat> place side bets. And, you know, there were, there were like, like started out with like three, four of us um, who were working on, you know, workstation server kind of stuff. And we noticed that, that, that there was a lot going on outside of the workstation and server universe that was using a lot of the same parts. You know, people who were building, you know, locomotives, elevators, VCRs, cell phones, were all building small computers in them. Mm. And, and so we, you know, convinced Scott and others that... The Scott Manini, CEO. Yeah, that this was an area that was worth investigating. So, so, you know, we were, were kind of a bunch of scruffy, disgruntled malcontents. <laughs> and they told us, okay, go, go take a look, see if there's something there that's, that's perhaps interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and so we did, and there was, and, and, and the, the thing that was surprising to me was that there was a lot of, um, leverage outside of the domains that we were looking at, right? We were originally looking at, you know, devices that were sort of on the edge of the network and could connect back to the network. But, you know, people started using it inside the network very heavily. Did you have, did you or the team have a sense of, I suppose, of what you were working on? Because we can always look back and go, oh yes, well I knew, but at the time, what was the environment, the atmosphere like? Did you, were you hacking away with it without a sense of where it could go? Did you have a sense of, yes, this is going to be big? What was the atmosphere like? Well, so there, there's two kind of answers to it, right? There's, um, you know, we, we had a pretty strong view of where it could go, mm. right? But that's sort of in the sense of, you know, somebody who's who's writing a science fiction novel, right? Do you, you you know you're writing a novel about the way that the future could play out? Um, but it's really different to be sort of playing a mind game about how the future could go, and then seeing that you know this novel you just wrote it actually happened. <laughs> Um, you know, for us, it was just, it was just kind of a science experiment. You know, we were asking sort of like, what ifs mm. and, 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 um, and then, you know, by surprise, it actually, you know, the world kind of unfolded the way we had hypothesized. But it didn't go quiet as expected. Obviously we're talking about the browser there and that was obviously um, the, the browser internet back then was a very static page affair, wasn't it? You didn't have interactivity, you didn't have moving pages or objects within a page. Java, well, brought all that. Yeah, so 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 Java was the first thing that brought interactivity to to web pages. And actually, before the the whole browser thing, um, we had been working on like cable TV set top boxes mm -hmm. and various other things that were not browsers. Mm -hmm. um, because remember, this started in 91, and web browsers only became a thing sort of in 94, 95. Mm. So we had been working with um, cable TV providers and phone providers and um, consumer electronics providers. Um, but then, you know, as the browser world got more, more interesting and sort of was taking off, we were like, gee, there's an interesting place to go play. Um, so we did, and and we built a bunch of, of stuff to show people what web pages could be like if there was interactivity, mm -hmm. right? So we built things that, you know, did an animated demos of things that did like 3D models in web pages, mm -hmm. um, and just, to, you know, tried to show people what you could do if web pages could be dynamic, could be interactive. Yeah. And I think the other uh, a, a very important thing to say is just 
it went big into business after that, uh, a truly revolutionary language and platform that transformed business computing. As I start, said at the beginning, 90% of the Fortune 500 had right. adopted it. But there was all those smart cars as well. Can you account for that, I suppose, that leakage is it, or you know, that proliferation from that early browser to this other thing? What was, if you had to explain it in a, how or why it happened, can you explain in how or why it happened? And did that surprise you and the team? Um, so, I mean, there were a number of things that, that, that had been bothering me about the way that software was built. And, you know, one of the big areas that, that, um, that, that I really was, had been concerned about was how productive are software developers? Mm -hmm. How painful is it to create software? How much work do you have to do to get a certain amount of, of output? And a bunch of the stuff that was in Java was really about making developers more productive so that you could produce more complex, more reliable software, um, you know, with sort of without increasing the amount of effort. Mm -hmm. um, and and that worked really well, and and the and and it worked really well no matter what kind of software you were trying to build, um, you know. So it it really helped people build software that was reliable, that was fast, that would that, and that, that that you got from start a project to actually deploying it and using it in in real life very quickly, um, and. Companies like like banks, you know, did a few proof of concepts and said, you know, this saves us a whole pile of money to do it this way, um, and and so they switched pretty quickly because the economics were pretty compelling. Did you ever have any sense of concern, maybe, about its its health, where it might go? Because we know that at a time people thought people were always talking about the death of Java. Did you? ever share that concern or did you think no it's gonna it's gonna keep going um i guess you know the 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 problem with questions like that is is it's kind of like asking you know what your child is going to do yeah right you know it, it's out of your hands you know you you hope for the best um there's a slice of you that fears for the worst but you know, when when most of what you hear comes out of the mouths of um, partisans on the other side, um, you know, it's really easy to discount all of that. Um, so I was I was actually pretty um, neutral and unconcerned about the whole thing. Um, you know, part of me was hoping that something really exciting would happen from somewhere else, but, and, and a few th things did happen, but, um, you know, they all had pluses and minuses. Um, and I have to say, I'm rather amazed at where Java is today. How would you describe the state of the Java nation today? Um, it's, it's, it's really healthy. I mean, there are lots of other you know, programming methodology camps as well, and they're all pretty healthy. Um, Java's doing, I mean, if you had asked me 25 years ago, well, so, so literally 25 years ago, the guy who I was reporting to, um, you know, it, it was time for our annual review, review and, you know, in lots of companies, you know, part of it is you have to write down what your goal is for the year. And, and I remember writing down that my goal was to get um, 50,000 people to try using Java. 50,000? 50, <laughs> yeah, 50,000 to try using Java. Yeah. And my boss thought that that was ridiculous, that, that, was, that there was no chance I would make that, that you know, that I would be, you know, and he, he corrected to like 10,000 or I forget what number he actually put in. Yeah. Um, but it's like, well, kind of overachieved on that one, but it wasn't so much that 
I overachieved, but it was sort of like there was this like vacuum that sort of sucked Java into it. How would you say it differed to those languages at the time and, and possibly some around today? Well, so at, at the time, the primary competitor was, was C. Mm. Um, and C has a lot of really good properties, but it has some sort of bad properties in terms of how fragile your software is, how difficult it is to test, um, and, and how long it takes to develop C code to do sort of the same the same work mm. um, and how flexible the software ends up being at the end of the day mm. and how easy it is to build tools. Um, and, and pretty much, you know, the, the universe was C and C++ and sort of full stop. I mean, there were, there were people doing Fortran and COBOL and a few others, but they were, they were pretty minor. James, it's been a pleasure having you here this afternoon. Thanks for sparing the time on the 25th anniversary of Java. Yes, well, thanks for, thanks for inviting me.